Well, hey everyone, another look at this week in D1A Rugby and uh, some some big scores in terms of uh, how important they were. Also some big scores in terms of just number of points. We'll start with more of the lopsided games. We'll just sort of whip through some of those. I uh, don't want to dwell on some of those too much. Uh, Arkansas State against McKendry would be the first one we're talking about. And uh, a tough one for McKendry, but this is the whole point, is uh, find out what the standard is and uh, move on from there. Arkansas State is looking good this year. And as we said, this turned out to be a lopsided win for Arkansas State. So this is pretty early in the game, and you see quickly how fast they go wide, recycle really well. McKendry, what they're learning here is how you have to organize yourself and stay organized all the way through the battle. Uh, we're going to see a little bit of a break uh, off, uh, off a quick tap, first of all, penalty, not rolling away, you know, trying to slow down the ball, don't blame them. And then uh, Evan Rudy here, the second row, look at this little sidestep, and then the dummy to the right and then to the left, and I love that, the dummy one direction and then out to the other direction, and Dushinga Makiwa soars in for the try. Big win for Arkansas State. Lindenwood went out to Tennessee. They met uh, University of, uh, at University of Tennessee. Uh, they, their seconds played Tennessee. Uh, Mary Washington seconds played uh, Tennessee seconds. And then uh, Lindenwood played Mary Washington. It rained like crazy. And it was interesting because I was watching the game um, on, uh, on YouTube. And, and there were a number of comments just sort of criticizing the venue. Like, find a better venue. And stuff like... They picked a venue, right? They picked a place to, to meet. They didn't know, uh, you know, it's like, what, can they can they predict the future necessarily that they know is going to be a massive rainstorm? And anybody who knows about dirt knows that there's some places where dirt behaves differently from other places. So in some place like, like in California or say Texas, right, that ground is baked hard, baked hard uh, through most of the time. And then if it rains really hard in warm weather, the water is nowhere to go. Uh, same deal in California. Sometimes one of the reasons you get the flooding that you get at certain times is because the the ground is not really soaking up the water that easily because it's like compacted hard. It's also partly due to what the what the dirt is made of, things like that. Uh, you know, uh, hey, I grew up in a place that was uh, soft earth and clay. Um, which meant that everything was mushy all the time and uh, the dirt would coalesce around your boots and you could just sort of rip off a big sheet of clay-like dirt with all the little holes from your cleats in it. Um, so that was a little different too. But uh, here it is, right right out of the blue, bam, rain. It's going to pool on the field, right? And uh, credit to University of Tennessee that they uh, just kept the games going. So we'll have a look at this one. It's a sloppy one. For sure, but Lindenwood was very, very smart in how they handled it. Yeah, well, hey, we weren't kidding about that uh, rain and the standing water, just lakes upon lakes there in Knoxville. Good scrum from Lindenwood close into the Mary Washington line. Straight pass all the way out to William Bentley, the inside center. He goes straight to the line. Quick ball is so important and going forward so important. And you'll see this again off the line out. They attack. And again, Lindenwood just going straight ahead, first with the mall. And when the ball carrier peels off, Mary Washington's going to have to deal with that. And very smart play in terms of, on wet ground, muddy ground. Go straight ahead because anybody who has to change direction is going to struggle. Look at these backs out there. It's, so, it's adorable almost. They think they're going to get the ball. They're talking about it and thinking, hey, you know, maybe we're going to get the ball. Boys, you are not going to get the ball. It's not going to happen. They even switch sides, uh, it, sort of like a, a football backfield going in motion as, as the forwards are just going straight ahead. Bam, bam, bam. And the... The backs say, you know, how, how about we go on the other side? Maybe we'll get the ball there. No, they're not going to get the ball on that side either. But it does draw some defenders over to the other side from Mary Washington. And Lindenwood just brutal, so smart in that just terrible uh, footing. Pick it up, go straight ahead, make somebody take a step to the side. Once or twice, you're making a yard at a time, another yard. And referee, good job refereeing. Big win for, shutout win for Lindenwood. Drier times in Texas, in fact. Uh, University of Texas took on Texas Tech. 
the Longhorns uh, looking pretty good uh, in the in the Red River, and uh, while Texas A&M's games were postponed, A&M and Longhorns will be meeting next week. Uh, so that's a big one. Well, we're all having a little bit of fun with Texas against Texas Tech, uh, but in the end, it was uh, Texas with their hard runners, Egya, ready for one from number eight position, was knocking people over, running well. Uh, part of the other problem for Texas Tech was penalties, and they gave up a lot of them. There's a big hard runner, Tommy Marlowe, second row. His, his layback, not the best in the world, but uh, making some gain line, and in fact, you'll see him get back into action right here to pick up, pick up after this run and go in for the try. And another strong runner for Texas, Guy LaRue takes the pass from Tommy Shaheen and cuts right through the middle. Good little sidestep, gets out of that last tackle, goes in from long range, ends up being 57-0 for Texas, and they are looking very strong. Good shutout win for Texas, and then we go on to California, and we see Cal Poly. It's another team where their form has been really good, but they've been playing teams, and we're just sort of not sure where where, where do those teams fit. Okay, but uh, we'll, we'll have a look at uh, the Mustangs taking on UC Santa Cruz, and, and I have to say that um, Santa Cruz – Got exposed a little bit late, I think, chasing a very fit, very well-drilled, and very talented Cal Poly team uh, got to be quite difficult in the end. Quick attack off the line out for Cal Poly, and they're going to attack straight into some of those outside channels. UCSC, a lot of questions asked of them. They're not really able to organize. You see they're bunched up in the middle there. Big space out on the wide channels and they almost botch it actually have to cut back inside and rearrange it then nick puri goes in at the corner huge win for cal poly and then here's another california conference game uc santa barbara in the blue and white of san diego state in the red and this is a really weird one uh, on a counter kick down in the corner you can't really see the ball there but it's just kicked away to just sort of rescue it for san jose state a really good heads up defensive play but they're not out of it yet Goal line dropout, a good counter from UCSB as you see them. Send it wide to the left. Oh, my goodness, what do we got? Like a five on two, something like that. San Diego State all hands on deck to try and get it. And, in fact, SDSU does pretty well to halt this attack for quite a while. A couple of miscues by UCSB, but eventually they start to get it back the other direction. A good carry up the middle here, and they will go wide. Sending the ball through the hands very nicely. Outmax has so much space. Numbers on the outside. Cut back inside under the post. This will be a good win for UCSB. An improving team. Uh, seeing the wins come now. Let's give a quick thanks to our sponsors. Panther Rugby Academy. That provides high performance opportunities for players all through the southern United States. There's Irish Rugby Tours taking on tour all over the world. It's not just Ireland. But Ireland's a pretty play great place to go to as well, but Spain, Portugal, New Zealand, South Africa, UK, uh, places like that, though, Italy, they'll take you there too. So, uh, next phase rugby. If you are running a college team, you should be one of the se several hundred college teams that is on next phase rugby connecting with high school rugby players. So you can get that recruiting started. And if you are a high school rugby player, yeah, get started, get started on the app. Uh, it allows you to establish your list, settle your list, and uh, expand it, contract it, manage it, be seen, be seen with uh, your qualifications, video, things like that. Get a discount on the premium membership. You should have the premium membership. It's not that much, uh, considering when, when you're looking at your college recruiting options. It's not that much at all. It's a great investment into getting you in the right place. And the U.S. Rugby Foundation supporting grassroots rugby all over the country, uh, in, in ways of getting new teams started, helping uh, growing teams get equipment, things like that, and uh, uh, just helping players also find uh, opportunities So uh, through, through scholarships and, and various things like that. So help Grassroots Rugby support the U.S. Rugby Foundation. So the game of the week on, on the Rugby Network was uh, Central Washington against Arizona. Guess what? I can't get footage from the Rugby Network. Uh, which is uh, frustrating. Um, they actually want to give it to me, but there's technical issues on that. Um, but uh, Central Washington won a very, very close one. It could have gone either way. 
a penalty goal here, a drop goal there, uh, a call here or there. You know, that's just the way it is. Um, uh, you know, both teams had opportunities to make a different. 1917 for Central Washington, a good result for them on the road. Both of these teams have uh, some other fish to fry, and we'll talk a little bit about next week in a moment. But a uh, good win for Central Washington, but Arizona certainly uh, shouldn't hang their head on that. UCLA uh, went to Grand Canyon, and uh, that was a really fun game. Back and forth, back and forth until it wasn't anymore. Uh, red card uh, against uh, Grand Canyon in in my estimation, maybe a little harsh for a red, but uh, the the footage, you know, I'm not right standing right there, so I do have to say that I have the benefit of going over that incident like 15, 16 times, but I don't have the benefit of standing right there. A back and forth game. This was score, traded on score, traded on score. Grand Canyon cuts through here. A couple of really big runners for them. Luke Neely from uh, the fullback position. Jackson Gray at center. And here they're setting up Juan Phelan to go in under the post. Big try for GCU. That puts them in the lead. But probably the key try in this game, GCU now down a man because of a red card. This is the kickoff uh, after the try gets it within a score for GCU. UCLA comes right back, chases that kickoff down really well, consolidates inside the GCU 22 and are really close to scoring here on the wing, but they keep at it. Really good work from the forwards here to continue to win those rucks and get themselves back into their shape. And then finally, one more run from the forwards to commit the defense, and then out to the corner, and they will score on the outside. And that's a big one. That'll give them a two-score lead, and they'll get one, a couple more tries after this, but this is really the one that seals the game, in my opinion. And then finally, the backbreaker, Grand Canyon, looking to get something back. Oh, well, slightly telegraphed pass, a little bit floaty, interception. In under the post, that'll finish it off, 47-21. UCLA wins this one. And finally, the, perhaps the big statement made was BYU at Cal, going to Cal and winning by a significant margin in the end. And why did, they, why did that happen that way? And really, you have to look at the speed with which BYU plays. And, and what do I mean by that? I mean... Pretty much everything. I mean, yes, they run fast. Their speed that way. Uh, you might think speed of ball out of the ruck. Absolutely. Mostly it's speed of decision making and the idea, you know, I've got it I, and I know I've got to pass it. I'm going to pass it immediately. Uh, the ball is placed back there uh, on the ground and no one is there really to clear out or seal. Let's just pick it up and go. And because everyone's playing that way, um, they play really, really effectively. So we're going to take a look at a couple of long sequences here. And really what I want you to focus on, or what I've been focusing on, is just how quickly everything gets moving and how often BYU thinks about attack. Now look, Cal is not being passive at all. They're trying to get up in the Cougars' faces for sure, and they're trying to knock them back. And they do succeed a couple of times, but you see so often BYU is probing the defense, probing on the outside, getting that ball running forward, so they're very aggressive in catching that ball, and then the passing, always looking for that offload. Quick ball here. This is uh, actually a, a good little defensive meet by the Bears, the Golden Bears. This great offload again, but they're able to hold BYU long enough, and the thing is, the Cougars didn't actually... Look at this tackle. Check this tackle out. There's, there, there we go. Uh, but the Cougars didn't actually kick all that much. They kicked uh, maybe a, a couple of times. But they do decide to kick here. Eventually they realize they haven't been getting anywhere, but they have been wearing down that Cal defense. This is a really good kick into the corner. Not much you can do except try to get an angle and boot it back downfield. Even here, works out well for BYU. They go on the attack immediately, looking for a change of direction, looking for an offload. And they're going to work the short side here. And this is going to be the killer blow, really, uh, for Cal. Cutting it back inside, you'll start to see them say, all right, we've got a little bit of a weak side. Let's exploit that. There we go, on the attack. The little pass, little pass. Type 5 forwards making passes. There's the 
the loss of a little bit of a tackle, and then check out this offload. Oop! And then the next one as well, just a little bit audacious. And even when they lose the ball and it gets kind of loose and kicked up in the air, well, you know what? It doesn't actually matter. Cougars are able to go right back on the offensive, and that's all they're thinking about. So close to the line here, but they'll win this ruck, and they'll pick up and dive over for try. Then we come off the line out, and this is a stolen line out. And again, see how quickly BYU thinks attack, thinks catch pass real quick, responds to that, and they're able to get almost into the corner. Cal does really well to defend that because that wasn't what they were expecting. But immediately again, BYU quickly getting the ball available, charging into the Cal line, two faces with the forwards. And you know what? Let's go all the way to the far edge. Bit of a loopy pass, but they have enough space. They score. St. Mary's had two games over the weekend, Santa Clara, and then they hosted Boston College. They won comfortably against both. Uh, we'll see how, you know, St. Mary's plays the St. Mary's styles. They'll, they'll attack from anywhere, and I think that's something that uh, Boston College learned here against Santa Clara, uh, a nice storty to storty connection for a try and a good conference win. Okay, so as we get further into uh, February, we are now seeing some big-time games, uh, good matchups uh, all, all along the, the spectrum, really. But um, Central Washington, Cal Poly. So we were talking about Cal Poly's good, but we don't know where they fit. Well, guess what? We might find out, okay? Uh, UCLA, we talked about, you know, we found a good win for them, but what else can they do? They take on St. Mary's. So that's a massive test for the Bruins. And, and a good test for the Gales as well. Um, Lindenwood goes against Arkansas State. So now that's the old old school uh, Mid-South Conference matchup. Arkansas State has been rolling pretty well. But now comes a massive test against the Lindenwood team that's really hardly been challenged. And they did beat BYU. We talked about how good BYU is looking. Remember, last fall, Lindenwood beat them. A wounded Cal goes against a wounded Arizona, and then a wounded Grand Canyon. It'll be a tough trip for Cal. Uh, two games in three days, I believe, which is a, a, a good test of their depth. Uh, Arizona will want to just sort of put that close loss with Central Washington aside and go in uh, guns blazing. Uh, definitely Grand Canyon. Yeah, um, they'll want to put in good showing too. Those will be uh, two very interesting games in Arizona. And finally, as we mentioned, Texas A&M against Texas. And that is a game that really could tell us pretty much everything about the Red River. And if it's a big win for one or the other, that's a huge statement. And if they're looking at a playoff scenario, um, I know we've had some issues with playoffs and Red River teams. Uh, sometimes reflecting unfairly poorly on the Red River teams. I think that uh, if there's a, a, a big victory for uh, one of those teams, then then we're talking about playoffs, then we're talking about better rankings, we're talking about better seedings and all that stuff. So that's what we have this week. And I'll just check with, back with GolfRugbyReport.com and we will have uh, game reports, scores, Analysis, rankings, all of that stuff. See you later.